Hello everyone, so if you're watching this, then hopefully you've seen my first video. And if not, check the annotation or the video description below. Um, this is the second video since the release of my Warsim project. And today, as promised, I'm going to cover how to build your own battles using the Excel file. So first, when you download my zip file, you will get these files right here when you extract it. Open this Excel file, the Warsim database. And I'm just going to briefly cover everything. For more information, check my blog. Um, a link will be in the video description below. So first on the unit sheets, we have all of our attributes for our units that we're going to define here, and then each unit is just defined in a separate row. So to create a new unit, go to the bottom of the list. First is the identifier, the ID number. It's got to be a unique number, but it doesn't have to be in order like I have it here from like 11 to 18. So I'll use 101 for example. Um, this next column, pretty self-explanatory, it's the unit name. Then we have the stamina value, which represents the number of seconds the unit can stand within a deadlock before they're pretty much tired. The lower your stamina gets, the less efficient you are at defense. And um, stamina is used quicker when you're doing things like charging or firing a ranged weapon. And uh, so for a character like this, big boss character I'm going to create, I'm going to give him a little bit more stamina. Um, speed is movement speed in yards per second. HP is just an uh, example of like healthiness. It's like a hit point value you'd see in most video games. Um, my default here is 30. So like a human sized character would be 30. This guy's a little bit bigger. I'm going to give him 100. Um, in your simulation, you can use a thousand as your default or your base, or like five. The important thing is that you scale your damage and your armor based on your hit points. Charge, this value is more important for cavalry units who usually have a higher value. It's the bonus you get in a deadlock for the first few seconds after charging. So this charge value will actually literally be added to your melee attack efficiency for the first few seconds of battle. And then um, bravery hasn't been implemented yet, but the higher the stat, the bravery stats, the less likely the unit will flee from having low morale. Armor, the way armor and damage work is your melee attacks have melee damage and your ranged attacks have range damage. When you get hit with an attack, there's one of four attack types. And um, there's either miss, graze, hit, or critical hit. The damage will be zero for miss. The damage will be well, not damage, but HP loss. The HP loss will be damage minus armor for a graze. For a hit, it'll be damage minus one-fourth of the armor value, HP loss. And the HP loss for a critical hit will be damage minus one-eighth of the armor. And there's a minimum damage, or HP loss, I'm sorry, that will be occur or inflicted for critical hits and hits. So even if the armor is really high, there's still going to be a minimum damage. Um, this guy's got like a tougher skin, but doesn't really wear armor, so I'm gonna give him like a 12. Um, and then melee attack versus melee defense, or range attack versus range defense, just determines the chances of each type of hit landing. And um, they're also influenced, the attack is influenced by morale, and then the defense is further influenced by stamina. And uh, there's more on that on the blog, that's a very deep topic in my blog. So I'm making a big boss character here, I'm gonna give him 100 on both. Damage is literally the damage inflicted, you know, except when you take out their armor. The rate is the number of attacks per second. So a rate of one is one attack per second. 0 0.5 means one attack every two seconds, for example. And then a three would be three attacks per second, for example. So ranged works the same. The big biggest difference in ranged is the um, range of the attack and the ammo. Ammo is how many times they can use the attack and the range is, well the range in yards. Um, I'm not going to give this guy a ranged weapon so in order to represent that I'll give him no ammo which means these values here don't really matter since you know I'm just going to fill in random numbers oh, like I did for Zabag here. Um, then in the squads, I want to create a new squad called Hashmalum. So the first is the squad name, recommended to be up to 20 characters. Then you choose a side between red and blue. 
Then you fill in units and leader IDs, which are just the, from the first column. Now this squad is not going to have a unit or any units, so I'll give it an ID of zero. You're also able to have squads with units but no leaders. You just put a zero in the leader ID. And then the leader ID is this 101. So since I had zero units, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my count is zero. The count just tells you how many units are in that squad. And you can see as I'm filling this out, these calculations over here are kind of auto-filling. I'll tell you more about those in a second. The morale is their morale. Zero is normal or standard starting value. Um, you can start off high though if you want, based on your scenario. Um, a higher value increases their attack efficiency, a lower value, is, so like a negative number, actually decreases their attack efficiency and can eventually lead to them fleeing the battle, though that hasn't been implemented yet. Position one is front of the, um, the squad. Negative one means the leader, the leader will be in the back of the squad and zero means they'll be somewhere in the center. And this just determines how much combat they're going to see, how you know how soon they're going to start killing opponents and being attacked themselves. So if you want your leader to be safe, give him a negative one. If he's going to be a front line chopping people up, give him a one. And the positioning is actually I'll make that a hundred. Make this three hundred. It's just the x y coordinate. Um, zero zero is the top left corner. Four twenty two seventy five is the bottom right corner of the map. And last, you gotta go to column K, make sure this is one value higher incrementally than the value above it, so zero through six right now. And then just make sure these formulas fill it out. See, some of them actually didn't fill out. So what you wanna do is just copy the row above. Make sure you get every formula too, otherwise your export won't work successfully. So I highlight all of the row above, control C to copy it, press the down key, and then if you just press control V for a normal paste, you can see the formulas have actually automatically updated. I'm going to press the escape key to get rid of that dotted line too. So now that our squads are set up, here's the standard game set or global or uh, yeah, game settings. Or the global settings actually too. Um, I'm not going to go into these to to death here because the description is pretty detailed right here plus you can check my blog but basically you do have the army names and then the standard size is probably the most confusing since I'm using squads of about 400 to 700 a standard size block will be 500 which means a thousand units in a squad would be a double size block 250 would be a half size block and then um, when all three of these worksheets are filled out press alt f8 that will bring up your macro press the run key also, your computer probably won't trust this file when you first open it. Just press the little warning at top that says enable macros or Google how to enable macros if you can't find that. But notice when the macro is done, I have this list nice and ready. I just click on A1, hold Control Shift, and then press the down key, and it'll highlight all of your data. Control C to copy. And then what we're going to do is go to our squad list.ini file. You can press Control A to uh, highlight everything, D, delete to delete it and then press control V to paste your new information and you can see Hashmalum squads in there so this is all new information be sure to save before running your executable file but when you run your executable file notice there is that 1604th unit in the Death Corp army that's Hashmalum this is my updated battle and there you are um, any questions be sure to comment um, check the change description for links to my blogs and other videos. Be sure to stay posted. My next video, I'll go over using the INI file to build your battles when you don't have for the people who don't have Excel. And just another example of standard, the standard size. There's a unit of 501. My standard size is 500, so that's a normal size block. This unit had only one, so it's down to the smallest size available. Notice this unit right here had 600, or the squad had 600 units in it, so it's actually slightly bigger than the normal size block. I think they go up to two and a half times the normal size. So that's just, you know, information for you when you're picking your standard size. If my standard size was like 50, for example, these would all be two and a half size blocks, and it wouldn't even start shrinking until a unit has lost enough troops to get down to about, you know, 125 or less. Like I said, though, any questions, just be sure to comment below or comment on my blog.